Today's daf is daf Tzadi Ches. Morata Hi Isisa. And Morata tells us a, a story that took place with a woman who was an almana. The Tafsa Kasa de Kaspa de Ksubasa. And she grabbed on to a silver goblet in lieu of payment of her Ksuba. However, the value of this goblet was not equal to the piron of the entire ksuba. It was less than 200 zud, for example. Katova Mazoni, she went ahead and demanded that the Soman pay her Mazonos, a soil coming to Rava, and the question came in front of Rava. Amaluhu Yasme, Rava turned to the Soman and said, Zilu Havule. Avila Mizonos. Go ahead and pay her support her Mizonos. And what did he mean by saying that? He meant to say that even though, according to Rabbi Shimon, once we apply the principle of, of Mitzas Kesef, Kekol Kesef, then she would have lost her Mizonos. However, Robert turns to me and says, Less the chash lahad Rabbi Shimon. No one passes like the Shita of Rabbi Shimon, who holds law in a mixas kesef kikov kesef. But rather, Allah, we pass in that mixas kesef kikov kesef, like the chachamim of Rabbi Shimon. And therefore, if she did not collect the entire ksuba, then she has rights to collect the zonos. According to Rabbi Shimon, Mitzas Kesef is not Dino Kikol Kesef. And when she sells part of the ksuba, she's mafsid the zonos. And as we said yesterday, the machlokes, as far as Basu Kohen Gadol, has nothing to do with this issue because that's an issue about how to pass in, how to interpret the psuki. Now, the Mishnah in Masech the Gitna, Daflam, and Daladam, and Bez, Paskins, that Eina al-Mon nifras mi nixi yisobim el b'shmur. When the al comes to collect from the estate of her late husband, then she must take a shmur to the effect that she did not get paid or collect any amount of her ksuba. The Mishnah in Erechin says, Shuma is so in Shloshin Yom, that Bezdin does a public auction on the Nechassim of the Yisomim in order to sell them to the highest bidder, such that the Balchov will collect his Chov at the highest amount. And now the question is, an almona who sells the karka for the purpose of collecting a ksuba, does she need an additional shvua in addition to the shvua that she was not paid any amount of her ksuba or could not collect any money in lieu of her ksuba, does she also need a hachraza of shloshim yom? We'll see about the extra shvua in just a second. Shalach Rabba Bere de Rava, the Rav Yosef, Mokheris, and Almano, who sells the Nixa Yisomim for the purpose of collecting Aksuba Shalom de Bezdin, Sricha Shmur, O Ain Sricha Shmur. The Rabba was asking Rav Yosef, should she have to take a Shmur to the effect that she only received for the purchase of the Kaka the Soman, the amount of Ksuba, but not more than the Ksuba. That's in addition to the Takon of the Kachom and Almona, who collects from Nitzli Soman, has taken Shmur that she did not receive any payment. And the Gemara is misstopping, maybe she does not have to take a Shmur to the effect that she didn't uh, receive more than the payment of the Ksuba for the Kaka. So Yosef responds to Rabbi, he says, Raza, 
why didn't you also ask, raise a suffix with an almono who sells outside of Bezbe, needs Hakroz of Shloshim Yom, in order to attract many potential buyers so that the character could be sold at the highest price for the highest bidder. Amalei, Rabba claims that I didn't have any suffix regarding Akhraza, local me boyle Akhraza. Why? Because I was medayek in the statement of Rabbi Zera, the Omar Rabbi Zera, Omar of Nachman, Almana, who can sell the properties of the Soma for the purpose of collecting Aksuva or for the purpose of collecting his own, is Shomali Atzma. She did her own evaluation of the Karka. And instead of selling the karaka to someone else, she just took the took the monies for herself. She took the karaka for herself, I mean, at the value of the ksuba or uh, at the value of the zona, based on her own personal private evaluation. But Zaira says that in this case, lo asus of lo klum. And why is that? Because she didn't sell the character. So the Yisoma now, according to the statement of Rabbi Zayn and the name of Nachman, can confiscate the character from the hands of the Almana and pay her off in Mo's. If there was a Hachraza and the Almana was the one who uh, Gave the highest bid on this character, my law is so cool. After all, she's operating on behalf of the best interest of the assaultant to get them the best price on their character. And it would make sense to uh, invalidate her her sale. Well, it wasn't really a sale, but I mean to say her akhraza, her lack of akhraza. Again, if she made the akhraza, on her on herself, so to speak, uh, giving the highest bid. Elala, therefore, by process of elimination, we have to assume the low achris. And in the absence of achraza, if she did her own self evaluation, it's low as low kum because we're afraid that maybe the achasim the properties could have been sold at a higher price and she lowered the price. Uli Atzma. Let's now be the dike from the language of Rabzera. The reason why we lost the Lokum is because Uli Atzma, she didn't sell it on an open market. It's not because of the lack of Akhraza. The Atma Hudalo Asvalokum Hotli Akhra, had she sold it to someone else, even in the absence of Akhraza, Mashasa Asa. Before we derive from this, that our money could sell outside of Bezin without needing Akhraza, and therefore I never raised the question about Akhraza. I was only wondering if she has to take a Shmuel. And the Gemara rejects this and says that from the statement in the name of Nachman, about an almana who sold Shalom Bezdin, you cannot derive that Ain and Srika Kroz, we own the Akhras. The case that came up to Rav Nachman was a case in which they did do the Akhraza. And Rav Nachman was Makadesh, that despite that fact, if she did the evaluation for herself, loss of all Klum. And why is that? Well, the army was my Shom Lich. The reason is we say to her, who gave you the license to grab onto the karka and possess it for yourself? The soul didn't give you such a shoes. The bezel didn't give you a shoes. So therefore, mechir itself means to transfer ownership from the mocha to the loke, from the buyer to the seller. If the mocha set appointed a shliach to sell the, the estate or the karka on his behalf, the shliach has no right, he has no legal uh, option of taking the object for himself. He was sent as a shliach 
to sell the object to someone else. So in effect, therefore, the shlichus is completely null and void, and the chayfetz, this karka, never went, went out of the rishus of the mocha. So the almana, as the shliach of the somim, was appointed as an agent to sell the nechassim to other people. She cannot, therefore, take it for herself. But if she sold the character to someone else, that sale would be valid because the Chachamim gave a license to sell the character to someone else. And the character leaves the Rishus of the Yisomim, the Mokher, and enters into the Rishus Lokeh. And we're going to now apply this same principle, Man Shomloch, who governed the following case, the Afkidu Gabe Kisa Diasi. There was a person in which Bezdin gave a Picodon into his Rishus of what we call Mispo through the Behemoths to sell them. On behalf of the Solon, Ozel Shomel and Nafshi Bar Bobio Zuzi, the man went ahead, evaluated the 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 the, the property in this case, the Mispo, the Kista, at four hundred Zuz, and he made a Kenyan for himself on his own behalf. At the end, I hear Kambushisme, the value of the Kista went up. From 400 Zeus to 600 Zeus. Also, the Kami de Rabbi Ami. Omalay Rabbi Ami turns to this person who wants to be Zoka in the extra 200 Zeus when the Kista goes up in value. I'm sure who gave you permission and license to be coded for yourself. So at this point, the Gemara rejects the proof from a Nachman. So we're left with two statements. Number one, when Almana sells the Nechos and the Yisom Shalom of Bezdin, does she need a Shvur? Number two, does she need a Chroza? And the Gemara Paskins, the Hufasar, Trika Shvur, but Eina Trika Chroza. She will have to take the oath that she didn't sell the Karka for a price that goes above and beyond the value of Aksum. And secondly, she doesn't require a cross of Shloshim Yom. Whereas when Bezdin sells the Nechassim Yisomim, they must do a cross. And now we're on the Mishnah here on Daf Sari Chesam Rav. Al Monash Oisak Sibosom Asayim Umachra, she sold the Karka Shovemona only at the value of one mona. Now she wants to collect the balance for Aksuba. So that's going to be the safe. The ratio is, she, the CAC was actually evaluated at a mona, Aksuba's Masayim, and she was able to find a buyer who doubled the price to Masayim. And she says, well, you know, what what's... Uh, my gearly, what, what I get as payment of the Ksuba is worth a mana. The extra mana is mine. I, I, I want to pocket that. I still want to get the balance of my Ksuba, another mana from the Yisoman. Give me another piece of character. Oh, now we have the flip case that I mentioned earlier. Shalom Masayim. The mana. She undercharged. The character was worth Masayan, and she sold it for a mana. And she says to the Yisobim, I deserve another piece of character that's worth a mana because my Ksum is Masayan. So, in both these cases, the Mecher is valid, the sale is valid, but Ms. Kabla Subasa, she has no right to claim more for the Ksuba. So in the first case, she'll have to she'll have to um, accept the Masayim as payment to, full payment to Baksuba. She has no claim that she deserves another piece of character in addition from the song. And in the second case, she will 
have no claim to the Ksuba because the character was worth more time. She messed up by selling it for a money. That's her problem. Now we go on to a case of al mona, Shohaisa Ksubasa mona. She only had a Ksuba mona. Machra Shava mona vidina vidmana. She took a piece of character that's worth a mona plus a dina and sold it for a mona. She did not sell it for its full value. Michra Batel. The whole sale is invalid. The character goes back to the Yisoma. And the reason for this is that since she sold the character that was worth a mona vidina for only a mona, then every part of the character was sold below its value, its true value. She has no license to sell Karka below its market true value. She cannot undersell it, meaning sell it for a cheaper price and cause a loss to the assailant. So the Mechira, this, this case was built on toes and therefore the Mechira is bought it. She only had uh, Proxy to sell the character its value. Bafili of Meris Axid Dino Yorshim, but even if she says, well, if I cause the loss of one Dino to the Solim, I'll pay it up from pocket. No. The Mechra is bought of Shimonam Leal on there, he disagrees. The Ola Mechra Kayan. The Mechra is valid. That's like we saw earlier in the Mishnah. She'll obviously have to pay up the Dino to the Yorshim. They can't be cheated out of that dinar. And now the Mishnah asks the question, to what extent of what need of the character that she sold, in essence, illegally, because she sold it at a cheaper price, and yet the Mecher, according to Shunam Wheel, is still valid. What's the ceiling? Ajitesham, Kedeshit, the Shire of the Sod of Aspisha Kavin, who begin of Kav. Up to the point where the character that she sold, meaning had she not sold the character beyond the value of a ksuba, they would, they would be left for the Yisomim a sizable area that's royal Lashimush. Which would be in the case of the Sada Tua, Bas Tisha Kavim, that you could plant there nine Kavim's worth of seeds of Zroyim, which means it's 75 amos in length and 50 amos in width. Ubegina, or if it's a vegetable garden, Bas Chatsi Kav, you can plant there a half a Kavim of Zroyim, which means the Area is 50 hours long and 25 talking wide. And that reflects the sheet of Rabbi Akiva in Bavasra Dafir Aleph, that Shir Gino who bas the Rova, meaning that you could plant there a Rova Kavs Roy, means the ship that is 25 hours long and 25 talking wide. So she, by selling it, was mafsid the Yisom. But if, even if she had not sold the karka of Odevas Alex Lugo, the Yisom would not have a shetach, an area, which is Roy Lusad or Ligina. So it's considered that she wasn't mafsid, or she didn't cause any loss to the Yisom, because they have no use from that karka. It's a small area. Now the Mishnah wants to address the case of an Almana who sold to one person a character with Tosefes. So she sold one person character Bimana to another person another character Bimana. She sold a third character to a third person, Bimona. And when she got up to the fourth person, 
and the kaka now is worth one mana, she sold it with a tosefes of a dinner's worth, and she sold it for a mana. Mishnah establishes shall achon butter. The last sale to the fourth person, the fourth buyer, is null and void because it was a toes in that she under underpriced it, undersold it. But shall kulam michon time. But all the other three first sales, those are valid. And the Gemara is going to talk about later a case where after the sale it went down. Gemara asks Maishna, what's the difference in the second din of the Mishnah in the case where the Almana sold Takish of a Messiah and Dimona? In such a case, the din is that she received Taksuba, and so we don't have to give any additional value. Because she sold it and reaped in a full super value of 200 zeros. Yami will at if sadif. Right? You took a karka that was worth my sciences. And you sold it for money, for half its value. You you brought the loss upon yourself. The one now argues. If that's the case in the second of the Mishnah, we should apply this by analogy the same yardstick for the first case where she sold a character that was worth a mana from a scion. She reaped in double the price market value of the character. Nami Pema and Arvaku, I think she claimed I made that profit. And the character from my Pirongsu was only worth a mana. If I successfully sold it at Masayan, that's my profit. And in the Masifti adds, Kasher al Monument tells the other Karka who Subasa, the Rotsa Limka Sakarka, Nechava Dover She Tonsa Liatsma Sakarka, Yosa Shah. So when she sells the Karka, it's considered as if she's the owner of the Karka, the he Zosha Mo. She's the one who sold Kher. And therefore, if she sells it at a cheaper price than its value, she takes the loss. And therefore, logically, she should take the benefit and the profit if she sells it at a price above its value. And the more answers, Omar of Nachman, Omar Rabba Barabua, and 